everything I could, uh, but I'm still sick, amen. I'm still, amen, bleeding. Uh, I still, it's uncontrollable. And I need a touch from the master, amen. And by faith, amen, she reached out to him and he felt that. And he said, thy faith hath made thee whole. Not so much to touch. And even though we want to touch him, amen. But her faith in him, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Amen. And he said, your faith had made you whole. He didn't tell her that because you touched me, you are made whole. He said, your faith has made you whole. Because you believed, if you could touch me, you would be made whole. Now, she put forth some effort. Even what I'm going to preach. Amen. As good as that is, amen. This morning, there's another person, amen, who reached out to Jesus in even a more desperate situation because this young lady is not even a part, amen, of the children of God. She's outside of that promise, amen. But yet she had faith, amen, and that faith, amen, had reached out and touched the Master. Amen. If we look through the Bible, we see where Jesus. Walked through the streets, amen, of Galilee, the Decapolis, amen, Genesaret. He walked through uh, 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 Capernaum. He went through uh, countless cities, Samaria, and, and all these cities, Berea. And he come through these towns, and, and he would do mighty works, and he would touch, amen. Uh, but the Bible says in the, eighth cha uh, the seventh chapter of the book of Mark, if you're there, turn with me to the uh, seventh chapter of the book of Mark. Amen. And here we're going as uh, 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 from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tari and Sidon. Amen. Uh, uh, here we're in the, uh, the coastal cities. If you've ever uh, studied your biblical maps, you'll know that Tari and, Sir, and Sidon are on the coast, the upper northern part, amen, uh, outside of the, uh, the city of Jerusalem, outside of Israel, uh, uh, just up into the northern part before you go up into Syria. Uh, uh, but... That is where Galilee is, is in the northern part of Israel. It's up near the Golan Heights. The Sea of Galilee is the front, is the northern part of the nation of Israel this day, amen. And on the north side of that, of that sea, amen, which is actually a great lake. It's not actually a sea. It's a big old lake. It's landlocked. But the sea is just a few miles to the, uh, to the west of it. And that is where you find the cities of Tyre and Sidon. Now here, Jesus has been ministering. Uh, up and around Genesaret in chapter 6. Uh, in uh, chapter number 7, he's still there in that city. Uh, 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 and uh, the Genesaret was on the border, the, the coastal part, amen, of the Sea of Galilee. And they go across to Tari and Sidon. And in chapter 7, verse number 24, if you're there, say amen. amen. Listen to what he says. And from thence he arose, that's Genesaret, and he went uh, into the borders of Tari and Sidon and entered into a house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. Amen. His, his, his popularity had done, uh, got out there and done overtaken, and, and people knew who he was at this point. And the Bible says, For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. And the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. She is not a child of God in the sense of born of the lineage of Abraham. Amen. She's outside of that covenant promise. Amen. You have to understand Jesus has not died yet. Amen. The veil in the temple has not been rent yet. The way for the Jew amen, or the Gentile to come into the family of God has not been opened up yet. Amen. It's still, even though Christ is here, God is with us. Uh, it's still by the law. Amen. He's fixing to, prefer, uh, to end that uh, in just a few uh, days, maybe a year or so or from this point. Uh, uh, it's coming to a close, uh, but it's not there yet. But as he comes into this city, this woman has a child with an unclean spirit. Amen. This unclean spirit is abusing her child. Uh, amen. No doubt this child is maybe cutting itself. Uh, it, it could be saying things. It could be doing things that, uh, uh, that are, are bringing harm to the family. Uh, uh, she could be falling down. She could be going into fire. She could be trying to drown herself. Uh, this unclean spirit is trying to destroy this child. Amen. And the Bible says the woman was a Greek woman. Uh, uh, setting to the point, amen, that she has no right, amen, to come to Jesus. Uh, she's outside of the covenant practices and promises of God, amen. And the Bible says she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. 
But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meant to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. Wow. And she answered him, and this is where we have to get to this point this morning. We have to understand that Jesus is not trying to hurt this woman, uh, but that the word of God would be filled, amen, to the Jew first and then to the Gentile, amen. The, that, that the promises, amen, would be delivered unto the children of Israel first uh, because they were, amen, the apple of God's eye. They were the ones, amen, who God brought up out of Egypt, amen. They were the ones, amen, who God brought through, amen, uh, the flood, amen. They were the ones, or the, 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 the open the sea of Amen, so they could get through. The, the children of Israel were the ones that came through, amen, uh, uh, the desert experience, amen. It was to them that the promise was given uh, that they would inherit, amen, uh, the land of Canaan, amen. Uh, and because of this, uh, uh, Jesus tells her that the gospel, amen, must be delivered. The promise must be delivered to the children first, uh, amen, and not to the dogs, amen. And, and it would be a simple... Uh, Reminder, amen, of the state that she's in, amen. And because of this, she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, uh, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. Uh, amen. That's something this morning that stirs my heart, amen. Uh, because, see, I wasn't born of privilege. Uh, I wasn't born in education. Uh, I wasn't born to a fine family, amen, considering it uh, uh, in this world standard. Uh, but yet, amen, because of Jesus Christ, uh, because of the promise, amen, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Because of the promise, amen, for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe on him uh, should not perish, amen. Because of the promise, amen, uh, I've come into this world uh, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Uh, because of that, uh, this first instance of a, of a Greek woman uh, trying to touch Jesus, amen, and he would tell her that. Uh, but she says, it may be true, amen, that you've come for the children of Israel. Uh, she said, but I believe that you can heal my daughter. And faith, amen, touched him. Uh, and the Bible says, he said unto her, for this saying, go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. She never touched him with the physical touch, but her faith in believing, amen, and not being discouraged, amen, saying this, I may not have everything that everyone else has. I may not have the pedigree. I may not have the education. I may not have the abilities afforded to many around me, but one thing I do have, and that is faith, amen, that my God can touch, amen. I have faith, amen, that regardless of the situation, amen, my God can move and work, hallelujah. He can move mountains. Uh, he can dry up seas, uh, amen. He can open up doors that no man can open. Uh, he can close them behind me, uh, and no man can come after me. My God is able. And by faith, I believe him. If we look at the woman with the issue of blood, we see that she had tried many physicians. She had tried for healing. She wanted to be healed. She wanted to touch. She wanted to, amen, for that problem to go away. And when she heard of Jesus, she made her way into the streets. I don't know about you, but when you're iron deficient, how many of you know what that is? When you lose blood, you become iron deficient. Amen. Weakness uh, that, that you just don't understand. When you're iron deficient or low in blood, the body can't funk. Can't, you can't hardly put one foot in front of the other. I remember upon one of the pregnancies with Christy, she had become iron deficient in the, to the point that she couldn't hardly walk. And, and she was so sleepy and tired and was trying out what in the world's wrong with her and as most good husbands and you know, i was like get up woman it's, you know you got to do something now you can't keep laying around all the time. until i found out what the problem was and then it was old but i'm sorry you know how good husbands are we give y'all ladies a joke and then to make y'all understand you know that we're still in control come on get up now let's go you've been laying here for two days dishes piling up clothes need washing Lord, help me, forgive me. I just can't hardly get up and go. Just ain't got no energy, ain't got no strength. Well, I know you're pregnant and all, and you got 
be careful, but, you know, I need supper cooked. And, you know, that's like a good husband. And if I'd have been a bad husband, I'd have said something bad. But, see, that was just encouragement. That's all that was. I was get up and come on. Found out that he was under fifty. And the result of that is, is a body that can't hardly go, it can't hardly move. And, and upon getting the right medication and getting the, the, the issue resolved, uh, she was back to strength and everything was able to go. And I was still doing the dishes and I was still helping wash the clothes. <laughs> Amen. Like a good husband. Never washed too many clothes, I will say that. I messed up a few of them and she don't let me back in there. But this woman with the issue of blood, she made her way into the street and, and, and because of her desire to get close to him, even though the, the, the problem uh, that, that, uh, that was a part of her, uh, uh, in that situation, she was still determined to get to Jesus. Her faith, you see her faith active, and you see her faith working. And, and against all odds and against everything that was stacked against her physically, she should not have been able to make her way into that street. And even though she made her way there, she should never have been able to push through that crowd. Strong men, Peter, James, and John, being tousled and pushed. If you go back and read it, you said Jesus, he was being thronged. It meant that there was such a press against him that he couldn't hardly control where he was going. It was the movement of the crowd that was pushing him. And then I see this little woman. Reminds me of my granny Martin. I preached it one time that, and kind of that, that mindset. And man, the Holy Ghost fell. I could see my little Granny Martin. She was a small woman, but she was tough as nails. I, I mean, I, she, that woman, could she defied logic as small as she was, but as strong as she was. She didn't have no stop or cane in her. She just grew up in that time where it didn't matter who you was, you weren't, you got it and you done it. And you just fought through it. You figured out a way to get it done. And I, I, I seen this woman as she's pressing her way through this crowd. She shouldn't be able to get there. But see, that's what faith can do. Faith, amen, can supernaturally give you something, amen, and strengthen you and help you to get over or to go through or to come over something, amen, that you never would have been able before. My faith is in God, amen. It's not in doctors, though I appreciate them. My faith is not in the bank, though I need it sometime. Uh, my faith is not in my job, though I have to have it to make money. Uh, my faith is in God, amen, and everything else is secondary. God, amen, is my source. And because of that, in spite of the circumstances, we're able to make it. But this little woman, and coming to a close, this little woman, she doesn't have, she doesn't have, the, the first woman or the woman with the issue of blood, she had at least, she was a daughter of the Most High God. At least she was one who, uh, you know, who had the right to come before Jesus. In the sense of we're talking about coming before the priest. Because the Bible says that he is made our high priest. Amen. In Hebrews, he is our high priest. Uh, and if you look at it from the biblical sense or the Levitical law sense, uh, no Gentile could stand before the priest. You couldn't get that close. It was unlawful. In the court, amen, you had what they called the court of Gentiles, which was the court of women. Amen. Actually, the Jewish women could go one step closer, but the Gentiles was on the outer court. That's as close as you could get. You had the court of women, then you had the court of men. Amen. And then you had the altar, and then you had, I mean, uh, you had the brazen pot, or the, the brazen altar where the sacrifice was made. And you had the brazen uh, uh, laver, amen. And you had the wash pot, amen. And, and you had steps going up into, amen, the temple or to the, uh, to the sanctuary part of it. And as you move through there, only the high priest could go into that part. So as you look at these levels, she was on the very back end, separated from the priest. If we look at it in this instance, Christ being our high priest, as she comes to him, she asks of him. She said, will you heal my daughter? She besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. And Jesus said unto her, let the children be filled first. Let the children be filled first. Now, I thought about this. If you look at it in this instance, 
the children here are those who were born of the seed of Abraham. That was who God looked at as the children. It was those who had come through the Abrahamic covenant. Amen. Has Abraham had faith and believed in God? And the Bible says, for that God called Abraham his friend. And everyone born, amen, of the seed of Abraham uh, became, inherited, amen, a child of God or through the promise of the Abrahamic covenant. But we also know that Jesus told the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you can say that Abraham, you can cry out and say that you have him for a father. You can do that all day long. But that's not going to get you into the kingdom of heaven. So we could also look at this and say this. Let the children be filled. First be filled could have been a prophecy. Amen. For this, amen, is meant for those, amen, who will accept me. And those who will come to me. And those who will believe and trust in me. Let those children first be filled. Amen. What is he saying? We all come before God. Amen. Lost and undone. Needing a touch. Amen. And like a child, we are unable or incapable of doing anything about our condition. Uh, but because of childlike faith. Uh, amen. You may be 20, 40, or 100 years old. Uh, but your faith. Amen. Gets like a child. Uh, and says, but God, I need your touch. Amen. I need you in my life. I can't go no further. He says, let that child be filled first. He said, it's not meant to take the children's bread and to cast it under the dogs. You know, so you, you we get this understanding that he's talking about the natural children, or he's talking about the children of Israel, amen, and rightfully he may be so, amen. But to me, amen, the compassion of Christ is not telling her that she's a dog. Uh, but he's saying, look at here. What I have is not meant to be cast to dogs. Uh, it's only been to be meant to cast to the children. Yes. And she answered and she said, yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the master's table eat of the children's crumbs. I got a little dog at the house. And when everybody's eating, you know right where he's at. He's not in there in his bed, I promise you. He's right there at the table. What is he waiting on? He's waiting on something to fall. He's waiting on something to come his way. He's not my daughter, but he's part of our home. And we feed him just like we feed the children, but he don't get as good a portion. He don't get as much. He don't get exactly what they get, but he gets some. So if we look at it from this standpoint, the children, Jesus is saying, let the children be filled first. Let those who love me and honor me, let them first be filled. Amen. If, if we are to be filled with Christ, we have to come to him. Amen. You ain't going to get it because of who you was born to. You're not going to get it because of how much money you give or because of your education level or because of your talents or your gifts. Your pedigrees uh, uh, afford you nothing, amen, in the kingdom of God. It's only by faith can I have this. So he says, let the children first be filled. For it's not meant to cast this preciousness to the dogs. He said, don't cast your pearls before what? The swine. Nor before the dogs' wine. Amen. He said, lest they, amen, take it and rend it and come on, you know. You know, in other words, you don't give this to those of a mind who's not willing to receive it. And she, in her mind, didn't understand him. I've never preached this. I've never heard this before. If this hurts you or offends you, it's, it's, it's not me. It's coming from God. I don't think she understood what he meant when he said, let the children first be filled. I think she thought just like we do. He must be talking about because I'm a, I'm a Gentile. Because I'm not worthy to be fed. That's why he said that. And that's why she replied, but yet even the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the master's table. In other words, she put herself there. She said, well, I reckon I'm a dog then. And I reckon I'll just have to take the crumbs. But can somebody tell me why Christ died? Did he die for the Jew? Why would he call her a dog? I don't think he did. I think he mis she misunderstood what he said. I think for years I misunderstood what he said. 
Let the children first be filled, for it's not meant to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. Sounds like he's saying, it ain't for you. It's only for these. But why would Christ say that? Why have we believed that for so many years? If you come to this altar of prayer and Christ said, well, it's not really for you. It's only for the children. It's not meant to cast it to the dogs. How many of us would want to press in and get in a little bit more? I see what she said. She said, well, I reckon I'm a dog then. And I've heard it preached before. Call me a dog. I get it. I understand. But, but I don't see Christ telling her she's a dog. What I see and this is from God. He said, let the children first be filled. Not the Jewish children, but those who will come unto me and believe and trust in me. Because whether you're a Jew or a Gentile, the only way you're going to get filled by him is through faith. It ain't because of who your father was. He said, it's not meant to cast it to the dogs. Immediately she said, well, he must be calling me a dog child, she thought he meant the children of Abraham. I've always thought that. But Jesus, I believe this morning as he opened my heart to this, he's saying, let the children, let those who have a childlike faith and a belief in him, let them come to him and honor him. And what happened was, as she was, her, her request was granted. Not, you know, if she was a dog, amen, if, if, if he looked at her unworthily, but yet her faith, amen, touched him, then really what he was saying is, this is for those who have faith, amen. Let those be first, amen. Why? Because a person that has faith in me is like a child. When we come to him, we were broken. And the only way we got salvation was because we were humbled in our hearts. Pride had, had to leave. Our dependence on education and, and, and accolades and pedigrees and all these other things that we look to and we say, look at me, look who I am. All that stuff had to be broken down into dust, amen, and blown away that like a child. And we could come to his feet and say, Father, help me. Let the children be filled first. It's not meant to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. What he's saying is, is like you don't cast your pearl before the swine and like you don't feed this to the dogs. Why? Because they don't want to receive it. And in other words, he says, it's precious, amen. It's honorable. Hallelujah. This that we feel in our hearts, amen. I want everybody to have it, but everybody's not going to have it. And I've tried to witness to people who took the preciousness of what God done in my heart and they tried to turn it into something filthy and vulgar and rude and nasty. What it was is I had cast my pearls out there. I had told somebody about what God had done for me. And that's right to do that. But don't think that everybody's going to receive it. Don't think everybody wants to hear it. That's the dog. That's the dog in this story. He said, let the children first be filled. It's not meant to the children's bread, that which is of faith, amen, and meant to those who come and ask, amen, for a touch or a healing or for salvation. It's not meant to take that and cast it to the dogs because they don't want it. Let the children first be filled. This is for those who will come by faith. We take this gospel into the world, and this world is full of those who want it and those who don't. And you learn quickly who do. And who don't? And once they reject it, it's not to give up. But how many of you keep going back to that same person and trying to keep sending it to them? He said, it's not meant to cast it to the dogs. My little dog wants to eat every day. Does yours? So a dog wants something every day. He said, don't cast this to the dogs. Don't give this to the dogs. It's meant for the children. It's meant for those who have faith and those who trust Him and those who believe. Amen. That's who this is meant for. And she misunderstood Him and she said, well, I reckon He's calling me a dog then. She says, well, don't the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the children's table? I reckon if you consider yourself a 
dog, amen, then you don't mind camping out underneath the table. But I'm going to tell you something. This morning, I'm a child, amen, amen, and I pull up feet first, amen, amen, to the master's table. I sit in the big chair, amen. I don't crawl up under the table no more. Thank you, Lord. I've been made and drawn nigh by the blood of Jesus. The Bible says I've been made an heir of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm not a dog. Amen. And I wasn't a dog when I came to him. Amen. I was one that he said, Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. I was a lost and undone sinner. Amen. But I've never considered myself a dog. Maybe she just misunderstood what he meant. She said, well, if he's saying that it's not meant for the dogs, she says, I know I'm not a child of Abraham, and that's what all these Pharisees and Sadducees, that's what they prayed around. Well, you can't have this because you ain't of Abraham. You can't have this because you ain't of Abraham. Sounds a lot like the church. You can't have this because you ain't right. You can't have this because you won't do it like this. You can't have this because this is only for our little group. Those that do it our way. You can't have this. Go on. Go somewhere else. This is not meant for you. It's only meant for our little group. I don't see Jesus coming into this world. The Bible says he come for everyone. He came for this one. And for this reason, I believe he was in this city at this time. I believe he was there for her. She misunderstood him. She said, he must be calling me a dog. Well, I reckon I'll be a dog then. She said, because I've seen the dogs as they sit under our table, and they get to lick up the crumbs. She said, I reckon I'll just settle for the crumbs. <laughs> Sister Barbara, I heard a message. Crumbs enough for me. A good message. I heard a message call me a dog. That was a good message. I believe, I mean, I, I believe the preaching of it was correct in that that's the way they saw it. But I can't see Jesus calling her a dog. I just don't see that. What I can see is that she misunderstood him. And she said, I reckon he's calling me a dog. And, and, and I'll just take what falls. But let me encourage you this morning. God has never saw you as a dog. Even unlaw, uh, un, in, uh, uh, unforgiveness out in the world, running in sin. The Bible says he shed his blood for each of us. And because of this, amen, we've all been given the opportunity. And he said unto her, for this saying, go thy way. The devil has gone out of thy, or thy dog, out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed. He said, for this saying, kind of like the centurion that told if you would, speak the word that my servant may be healed. And Jesus said, as, well, as they were going to go to his house, he said, you ain't even got to come to my house. This is my words. You ain't even got to come into my house. Just speak the word. That's all you got to do. He said, I have servants that are under me, men. He said, I tell them to go and they go. I tell them to stop and they stop. I tell them to fight, they fight. I tell them don't fight, they don't fight. Jesus marveled and he said, he marveled at his faith. And he said, shall he find so great a faith all in, of no, not in all in Israel? What he was saying is this. As this man who was outside of the covenant, promise of God according to the Levitical law, but yet his faith and his trust in what God could do, amen, it, it, it was even more so than the children who called themselves Abraham's children or God's children because of Abraham. They didn't even have faith in him like this man did. This woman, Jesus said, according to your saying, go thy way, the devil's going. He said, my gracious, you know. He said, she, you know, I wasn't trying to call her a dog, but she just went ahead and took it. Amen. He said, she's definitely got faith. <laughs> that was me, me saying that. But I, I just felt, you, you know, I wasn't trying to call her a dog, but. She just took off with it and run with it. You know, she said, well, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the children's table. I, well, honey, I wasn't trying to call you a dog. I'm just saying this ain't meant to be cast a dog. Not that you're a dog, but you've got to have faith. So there we get it. There we get it. That's what connects the story. 
I wasn't trying to call you a dog. I was just trying to say it's meant for the children. Who are the children? Those that come by faith. Amen. Not whose children are, are there because of Abraham. Because if that was the case, then Jesus wouldn't have had to die. Amen. We had just only the Jews would have been able to go. Amen. Those who was born of the seed of Abraham. But because Christ came, amen, we're not dogs, amen, amen. but we are children if we have faith and believe in him. He said, unless or except you make yourself as a little child, humble yourself as a small child, and believe and trust in him. He says, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You can't have it unless you become as a child, childlike faith, believing and trusting in my father. I made this statement many times. You can go ahead and start playing something soft. The, 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 I, I believe it was a, a TV ad, and it showed this father in the water. And we've probably all seen it. And the little kid, I mean, he's got floaties on. He, he's got so much plastic wrapped around him. He couldn't sink if he just fell in head first. He bobbed like a cork. I mean, there was no chance of him drowning at all. I believe his mama put it on him. You'll get that later. The father in the water saying, come on, son. I've got you. Just come on. He's got floaties on. He's got a tube around him. He's got things on his feet. I mean, the poor kid ain't no plastic in air. His mama put it on him. Because his mama didn't trust him either. Y'all women, y'all need to let these youngers grow up some. Protect them, protect them, protect them. Protect them, protect them, protect them. Protect them, protect them. It's hard to let them go, ain't it? But the father was in the water. Just come on. Just come on. That little boy, he, he didn't want to jump. Even though all the natural accoutrements, he couldn't have, he couldn't, his head wouldn't have ever got wet if he'd have jumped in head first. But there was just something about it. it was, there was some, a hesitation there. He takes all that off and then he leaps. And the father catches him, brings him into a, a comfortable embrace, and just kind of sinks back and lets the water kind of rise up a little bit on him and plays around in the water and shows him that it's not bad if you'll trust in the father. It's over his head, and it was more so than he could handle. But if you go with God, you will never go under. This world is truly deeper than what we're able to touch bottom. This life is full of trouble, heartache, sin is the reason. But if we'll go with God, we'll never have to sink. This woman, I believe she simply just misunderstood what Jesus said. You may never not hear another preacher say that in your life. But I'm going to stand before God and I'm going to give an account of what I've said here today. And I'm going to lay down night and I'm going to sleep thinking I did and knowing I did the right thing. I don't think Jesus was calling her a dog. I think he was saying, honey, this is meant for the children. And she, in her natural mind, said, well, the children are what they say the children are. She wasn't listening to Jesus. She had it made up in her mind who the children were, just like a lot of us sometimes. Get made up by what we've heard this preacher say and that preacher say and what this one has said. And we formulated a God or we formulated heaven out of what we've heard churches say. What does he say? If we'll look at it and judge it based on what he says, a lot of times we won't be confused with what everybody else is saying. Well, Brother Chris, he said it's not meant to be cast to the dogs. He must have been calling her a dog. Where did we get that from? What scripture in the Bible points to us where Jesus has said anything about calling anybody any negative thing like that? The only ones he talked bad to or negative to was who? The religious leaders. <laughs> to them who held the truth, but they held it in unrighteousness. Hmm. Well, we could go with that now. I could keep on. He wasn't calling her a dog. She just in her mind. Well, if I'm not a child... And it's not to be meant cast to the dogs. He said, can I, she said, can I just have the crumbs? 
because I've seen my little dog and he eats the crumbs that fall from our table, so I'll just put myself in that position. If I can just get the crumbs that fall from those children's tables, then I, I, I know that's enough for me. Can I tell you, a crumb is enough? But why put yourself under the table when you can slide up to the table? Why did she go there? Because in her natural mind, she had been told she was a dog. Not by Jesus, but by the religious. She had been put in that position because she had heard the temple say. She had heard the priests say. She had heard the Pharisees and the Sadducees call her everything but right, amen, because they were the ones that had the truth and she was left out. And when the, <laughs> I call him the because he was the, what? The God sent before us. The God. Not a God, but the God. Emmanuel, come. When she heard him say it's not meant to be cast into dogs, what did she just naturally, instinctively do? Even the dogs eat from the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And I can believe in my heart, he said, Honey, I wasn't trying to call you a dog. I was just trying to say it's by faith. He says, But because you was willing to humble yourself, even to that position, I didn't put you there, but you just humbled yourself down in that, into that, to that form. In other words, you've got no pride in your heart. You've got no care in your heart other than to reach me and touch me that your daughter can be made. That's what God wants us to do. He don't want you to consider yourself a dog, but we've got to humble ourselves down before him. And when we do that, amen, he says, your faith shall make you whole. I love him this morning. Do you? Amen. Ain't God good to us this morning? I hope we've got something this morning out of this service that'll help us and encourage us and strengthen us. This altar is open this morning as she plays and sings this morning. Give you an opportunity to pray. Amen. If there'd be one this morning, want to pray. Want to come to this altar this morning. Maybe you've gone through trouble and trial. Maybe you've gone through things. and Maybe that trouble is greater than you can imagine. Like the pastor said this morning on the service I heard, maybe it's just time for you to resign your position and give it to God. That caretaker of all the cares of the world. You know, sometimes we take this stuff on us because we're super Christians. Because we're better Christians than everybody else and we can handle it. That's a good way to get overloaded. <laughs> He's the only one that can bear it this morning. If you would, let's all stand. Dear Heavenly Father.